This week, we focus on the Ironman World Championship in Kona, Hawaii. Look back at the Kona legends of the past and meet today's stars as we follow the trials and tribulations of Europe's top Ironman athletes during the 2012 season. This year's European Ironman season was full of spectacular races and wherever the stars of the sport went, they had one goal in mind, to qualify for the Ironman World Championship in Hawaii. Kona is, uh, for me personally, and I think I can talk for a lot of, of the pros uh, eventually, uh, it's why we do triathlon. Yeah, it's, it's the ultimate goal. Everybody peaks to that day and only the best guys and the best uh, female get to the start. It's like, yeah, uh, for example, in, in tennis you have Wimbledon. It really is the race course that is the reference in terms of difficulty for many reasons. First of all, because of the level, as you have the 50 best pros in the world. If you've been at the start in Kona and experienced the atmosphere and the run, the highway, energy lab, that's the race that really turns me on. The mythical vibe of the island, the fact that the race originated here and that you punish your body in such extreme conditions, that makes it really an attractive combination. Kona is the myth, it's our world championship, and to get on the podium here is my lifelong dream. It's the really big uh, clear light at the end of the tunnel. The history of Ironman dates back to 1978 in Hawaii, when athletes combined the Waikiki Rough Water Swim, the Around Oahu Bike Ride, and the Honolulu Marathon together in one event. Fifteen men lined up that legendary morning to find out who was the fittest athlete, and the rest is history. Ironman was catapulted into the awareness of the general public in 1982, when college student Julie Moss, who was in the lead, collapsed 15 meters before the finish line. Unable to run any further, she was overtaken by Catherine McCarthy for the win. But it was the images of Moss crawling over the finish line that put Iron Man on the world map. In the 80s and 90s, another woman, Zimbabwean Paula Newby Fraser, left her mark on Iron Man history by winning eight world championships, a record that still stands today and makes her the Queen of Kona. For the first decade, the men's race in Kona was dominated by Dave Scott, setting a record with six wins and being the first athlete to break the nine-hour barrier. In 1989, Scott's reign came to an end when fellow American Mark Allen took over the crown in a race that will always be remembered as the first Iron War. Both men raced shoulder to shoulder until Allen made the decisive move towards the end of the marathon and won his first of six Ironman titles, five of them consecutively, between 89 and 93. By the mid-90s, the growing popularity of Ironman drew athletes from across the globe to Hawaii. One of them, Belgium's Luc van Leerde, who wrote history in 1996 when he became the first European to win the World Championship. In the process, setting a new course record that stood for 15 years. A year later, Thomas Hellriegel was the first German to triumph in Kona, and Luc van Leerde completed the European dominance of the late 90s when he celebrated his second victory in 1999. In 1998, Switzerland's Natasha Batman became the first European woman to win in Kona. But there was more to come for Batman, and the Swiss Miss added five more titles between 2000 and 2005. The next European to claim the title of world champion was Germany's Norman Stadler in 2004. On his return in 2005, Stadler struggled with bike mechanicals and fellow countryman Faris Al Sultan triumphed over the odds and claimed his first lava rock trophy. But in 2006, the Norminator was back and bagged his second world championship title, only 72 seconds ahead of Australian Chris McCormack. In 2007, McCormack finally achieved the goal he'd been chasing for the past six years. And in 2010, he celebrated his second Kona victory. But with wins in 2008, 2009 and 2011, his countryman Craig Alexander was the most successful Ironman athlete of recent years. 
In the women's race, the same accolade goes to Chrissy Wellington from England, who burst onto the scene as a rookie in 2007 and straight away won her first Kona crown, a feat she repeated three times until 2011. Port Elizabeth in South Africa was the first destination of the year for many of Europe's top athletes. Andy Becherer from Germany was in the lead after the swim, but Spain's Clemente Alonso McKernan and Cyril Vignon from France were hot on his heels. A tired Becherer was quickly caught on the run by Alonso McKernan and Vignon. Alonso kept his lead all the way to the finish line to claim his first Ironman title. Up next was the Ironman Regensburg in Germany, where former 70.3 world champion Michael Raylett made his full distance debut. Coming out of the water, Raylett took the lead on the bike, but Luxembourg's Dirk Bockel was right behind him. A tight bike race ensued, but ultimately Raylett had no answer to Bockel's strong performance on the bike. On the run, last year's fourth-placed Hawaii finisher extended his lead over Raylett and was triumphant in Regensburg. More than 2,500 athletes celebrated the 30th anniversary of one of Europe's most prestigious events, the Ironman France in Nice. From the gun, defending champion Frederick van Leerde set the pace and he was first out the water. On the bike, the Belgian extended his lead and gave an Ironman masterclass as he completely controlled the race. Clearly enjoying the Nice course, Van Leerde set a new course record as he stormed to his second consecutive win in France. With his victory at the Ironman France in 2012, Frederick van Leerde established himself as one of Europe's top Ironman athletes. Together with his coach, former Kona champ Luc van Leerde, the young Belgian is relentless in his pursuit of the ultimate prize in Hawaii and become part of the rich European Ironman legacy. I remember being at the pier for the first time, I got some goosebumps, so it's really as a young athlete, you see all those images, you see my trainer Luke win it, um, and then when you get there, it's, yeah, it's a special place. The lead up towards the race, the week before, the two weeks before, even more weeks before, everybody is, is focusing on that race. It's, it's, the one, it's the one that counts. Everybody is there, so uh, you need to be at your best. Van Leerde's training regime is specifically geared towards the world champs. He knows that he's got to be physically fit, but even more importantly, that he has to be mentally strong. For me, it's important to work a lot on the, on the mental because in the end of the race, it's, it's all about that. It's, everybody is physically ready to be there, but um, it's all about yeah, mental games. Be prepared to suffer a lot, just stay in the moment, and th those are all key things I work on. Looking for Hawaii, I, st I still go for that top st 10th spot because um, I think till now I never did it um, and, and try to focus on top 5 or even a podium would be a mistake so first go for that top 10 and once you get into that top 10 I've seen it last year it's um, I think the places are really close so everything can happen once you're in there. We continue our season's review with the Ironman Melbourne in Australia, where Rachel Joyce from Britain and Switzerland's Caroline Steffen lined up next to each other. Joyce was in the lead, but Steffen soon took control and raced home to take her first victory of the 2012 season. In perfect conditions at the Ironman Regensburg in Germany, Heidi Zessner dominated the race from start to finish. The 34-year-old finally fulfilled her dream and won her first full-distance Ironman race. Tina Decker's return to Nice to claim back the Ironman France title she'd won in 2009 and 2010. The Belgian was trailing race leader Gina Crawford by five minutes after the swim, 
but on the bike, Decker's proved too strong, and after 118 kilometers, she overtook New Zealander Crawford. With a sensational bike split, Deckers was able to cruise to the finish line on the marathon and celebrated her third victory in Nice, setting a new course record. Ironman Klagenfurt in Austria boasts one of the most scenic races and always draws a deep and strong field. In the women's race, it was a battle between Hungary's Erika Tomor and Lindsay Corbin from the United States. Once she'd taken the lead on the bike, Lindsay Corbin brought home the victory. Up next was the big one, the European Championship in Frankfurt. Having won the title in 2011, Caroline Steffen wanted to defend her crown. The Swiss triathlete was unstoppable and deservedly won her second European Championship. Being both Asia-Pacific and European champion, Caroline Steffen is the clear European favorite for the women's race in Hawaii. But the 33-year-old doesn't let the expectations get to her. Ironman Hawaii, the Ironman Hawaii is of course the world championship. And you know that that's a special thing. But personally, I come prepared exactly in the same way for Hawaii as I do for Ironman Frankfurt or the Ironman Melbourne. Ironman Frankfurt, Ironman Melbourne. Stefan has had a great 2012 season thus far and hopes that her wins in Melbourne and Frankfurt will be a catalyst for further success in Hawaii, like in 2010. I won race after race and had good results, and nine months later, I became the second at the Ironman in Hawaii. When I crossed the finish line with the Swiss flag, I felt as if I'd won, because for me personally, it was a victory. Last year, though, she had to pay her Kona dues and struggled to fifth place. In 2011, I learned a lot in Hawaii, and I think the race was very important in my career. Because I will think back to it many times in the future, especially when I'm in a race and encounter similar situations. Having built up her whole season for that one day in October, this year, Stefan is ready. I want to run a clever race at the World Championships in Hawaii this year. I've learned a lot from last year. I will listen more to my coach. He suggested a different tactic in 2011, and I changed it in the middle of the race. So this year, I will listen to him and see what the result is. We continue our season review with the Ironman Austria in Klagenfurt, where it was anyone's race in the absence of six-time winner Van Hunecker. British athlete Phil Graves was first out of the water, chased by Faris Al Sultan. Graves set the pace, but former Kona winner Al Sultan stayed within reach. The cheering crowds briefly distracted the athletes from the hot conditions, and when Graves and Al Sultan came into transition, the race wasn't over yet, as the strong runner Al Sultan overtook the young Brit early in the marathon. Once in front, there was no stopping Al Sultan, adding another title to his tally. Frankfurt provided the stage for the clash between Andreas Reilat and Marino van Hunecke, the two fastest men over the distance. Reilat showed his intentions early and was first out at the Australian exit, putting the pressure on van Hunecke.
Exiting the water with the lead group, Raylet quickly established a lead on the bike, forcing Van Hunneke to chase hard. With a change in the weather came a change in the lead. Raylet struggled after a crash and Van Hunneke was now in charge of the race. The Belgian comfortably held his lead in front of Sebastian Kienler in second and Andreas Raylet in third. But the day belonged to Van Hunneke, who claimed his first European Championship. After his triumphant win in Frankfurt and a short rest period, Marina Van Hunneke went straight back into his preparation for the World Championship in Kona, only too aware of what's expected of him. For the three disciplines, swim, bike and run, it's get, it, get, get the body ready to suffer for a long, long time. It's more speed, it's more specific stuff now, shorter, not that much uh, volume overlook on the week, but, but like more quality. You also focus or try to visualize uh, stuff. I mean, if it, I think it's a 10 time I've, I've, I will race Hawaii. So if I close my eyes now, I can tell you what palm tree is on, uh, on mile two. Focused on the ultimate goal, he knows he's got to be ready to gamble. If you want to go for the win, I think 99% uh, of the time, the guy who wins took some risk at some time in the race. When I was third, I really, I really went for it at some stage on the bike. I had the best race of my life. I don't think I, I let one second slip there, so I have to be happy with the, with the third place. That's where I, I really knew, okay, now, now I really can say I'm one of the top three or one of the, for sure, the top five guys in this sport. After his disappointment at not finishing the race in 2011, Van Hunneke now wants to prove that he is the real deal. Am I in this race to win it? Yeah for sure, otherwise I stay home. I, I want to play with the big boys again this year. Um, I, I sat on my hunger a whole year. Hell, I'm ready <laughs> for this. I'm so ready for this. We continue our season's review with the Ironman Zurich, one of the oldest events on the calendar. Starting with the huge crowd of athletes was five-time Zurich winner Ronnie Schildknecht. The slow-swimming Schildknecht had to chase the leaders down on the bike and his prowess on the bike didn't let him down. Once in front, he continued to pull away, all the way to the finish line, celebrating his sixth consecutive victory in Zurich. Bolton, England was the next stop on the tour. A lead group, including favourites Fraser Cartmel and Daniel Hawksworth, set the early pace. Cartmel rode his way into a seemingly comfortable position and was first off the bike. However, Hawksworth, sensing a possible first Ironman victory, chased down a tired Cartmel and raced home to victory. Wiesbaden was the venue for this year's Ironman 70.3 European Championship. Hot favourite Michael Raylet was with the lead bunch and quickly moved to the front. Nothing was going to stop Michael Raylet from claiming another 70.3 title. And after his speedy exit out of transition, the title was undeniably going to be his. For the first time ever on Scandinavian soil, Kalman Sweden was host to Ironman. The sold-out field gave the massive crowds plenty to cheer about and the fast course resulted in very close racing. First off the bike was Swede Carl Johan Danielsson with Germany's Jan Raphael in hot pursuit. At the end, Raphael proved too strong and claimed his second Ironman victory in his career. After a season of mixed successes, German brothers Andreas and Michael Raylet will race together in Kona for the first time. While it's the first Hawaii experience and a journey into the unknown for 32-year-old Michael, his older brother Andreas draws strength from his previous results at the World Championships. I have only positive Hawaii memories. 2009 and 2011 I was third. 2010 I narrowly missed the victory. For me personally, it's the confirmation and the belief that I have the potential to one day win the race. 
gibt viele spezielle Momente. There are many special moments that I've had in Hawaii. And for sure one of them was the duel with Chris McCormack and the last kilometers in 2010. To have the victory so close in front of your eyes was a great experience. But in that moment it was very tough because I thought I might have missed a chance. But you take so much strength and confidence from these moments that you really believe that one day it will be enough for first place. Having only stepped up from the 70.3s to the full distance in 2012 with his second place at Regensburg, Michael Raylet feels that the race in Kona is his true full distance baptism. Mentally, physically and psychologically, Hawaii is definitely my first Ironman, my real debut. I don't want to gain any experience there, I want to show the race of my life and I'm going there with the attitude to win. So does Andreas. To win the race, to prepare well and to perhaps one day see the name Raylet on the winner list, that's what I wish for. We continue our season review of the women's field with the Ironman Zurich in Switzerland. Early leader and Swiss favourite Simona Brentley took advantage of her swim and was first out onto the bike course and hoped to ride away from the competition. Hungary's Erika Zormor, tired of coming second, used her running skills to move to the front. Brentley dropped to third after being passed by Bella Bayliss, but it was Zormor who prevailed for the win. It was time for the ladies' race in Bolton. American Amanda Stevens was right up front with the leading men and first into transition and out onto the bike course. Ireland's Ima Mullen had a huge job to destroy a 15-minute deficit, but once past Stevens, the title in Bolton was hers. A stellar women's field started at the Ironman 70.3 European Championships in Wiesbaden and the UK's Jodie Swallow was first out of the water. Former 70.3 world champion Swallow's lead wasn't to last long. Germany's Anja Berenek quickly made up the deficit and owned the lead. Which she held onto the half marathon run all the way to the finish line. The quaint town of Galway hosted the second Ironman 70.3 Ireland. Race day provided perfect weather conditions. Strong swimmer Natalie Barnard was the early leader, but she knew that Tina Deckers was chasing her down. The inevitable happened and the 34-year-old Belgian took the lead and was not to relinquish it, being the first to break the finish line tape. Belgium's Tina Deckers has had a successful 2012 European season so far with wins in Nice and Galway. After placing 12th in Hawaii in 2009 and 2011, the 34-year-old hopes to improve on her previous Kona results, but she knows it's going to be tough. If you go to Hawaii, to the race in Hawaii, it's always really special. Uh, the atmosphere there, all the best triathletes of the world are, are taking part there, and that's, that makes the race so tough. Following a short rest period after Galway, Deckers is back in training, totally focused on Kona. The swim trainings are getting a little bit longer, like 5k or 6k. We have sessions where we have to swim hard, like 100 and 200 meters, with a little bit of rest, and then do it again for a couple of times. The bike trainings, um, we do the 180, 200k, it's like six, seven, sometimes eight hours on the bike. Every hour I do 20 minutes that I push it really hard. And in the running, it's all, it's all kind of nice and easy trainings. And then uh, one, one, once a week I do a 30K. Yeah, it makes the last uh, training weeks really tough. So all, all I do is then uh, sleep, eat, rest and train. My goal is top 10 this year in Hawaii, but uh, yeah, who knows? It, it can be a little bit better as well. Um, last year, Sonia Tashi, 
she was uh, seventh and if she can do it, then uh, I think I can do it as well. So uh, let's hope for the best. Will the training pay off and get Deckers into the world's top 10? Kona is an Ironman, but it isn't. It's the ultimate. On the course in Hawaii, the swimming is fairly easy compared to other races. The bike course with the winds in Hawaii can be very tough. And then on the run, you've got the energy lab, the hottest point on the island, and it can be extremely hot. It's the conditions uh, that make it so unpredictable. In 500 meters time, you go from a flying tailwind, 50k an hour, to a pushing, pushing and killing you headwind. You've only got one lap on the run, and it's more difficult because over much longer stretches, you have no people watching and you're running alone. Your body is completely wrecked, you're totally dehydrated, you're sweating, you're tired, you're hot, your feet hurt. Every step that you're going to take, you're dreading taking. Who will triumph over the challenging course and conditions? Kona has the answer. Next week, we're at the Ironman Wales in Pembrokeshire, the last European event before the world champs. And we find out everything that's important to know about race nutrition.